What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Chance. This channel is about teaching guys how to use all the resources at their disposal to date some of the most beautiful women in the world. And in this episode, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about a comment which I received. So I love this question and shout out to the homie uh, D. John, I believe is his name, that left this comment and I'll put it up on the screen and I'll read it. So basically what he's asking is, um, are sugar babies, or people who are sugar babies, do they consider guys that sugar date to be like, pathetic or creepy or do they just see it as uh you know just a guy that wants to date very attractive women and uh like i said i really love love this question i appreciate that he asked that because i think uh, a lot of men probably are thinking this like does it because this is sort of not a non-traditional way to date there is some stigma attached to it which I don't, I never struggled with that. I don't, I, frankly, I just didn't care. I don't have anything to prove to anybody. But some guys do uh, struggle with this stigma is like, does this make me like a lame or pathetic, like he said? So I'm gonna address that in this video. Hopefully I could keep it short. Guys, before I get really into that, let me remind you that I have my free guide, my free PDF guide, Seven Secrets Sugar Babies Don't Want You to Know is available absolutely free down in the description box is a link click that enter your email address make sure that you click that button so that you want to receive the newsletter so you can continue to get free strategies content insider tips things that i don't release anywhere else related to transactional relationships and dating so go ahead and get that free pdf guide is available down in the link below and let me now let me continue into the video right. so the way that i answered this question is that i used um, an aphorism that my dad always says. So my dad, shout out to him, always says this. It's like, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And he said that so much as, when, he said that to me so much in so many different situations as I was growing up. And it's interesting that um, the older I get, the more that I see that he was right. Nothing is about what you're actually doing. Everything is about the way that you carry yourself and the position that you do it from. And I'll use this example, a really quick example that most people can understand. What's the difference between like a Popeye's chicken or just some you know chicken fast food joint and going into a Chick-fil-A? Most people can understand this analogy. Um, they're putting fried chicken and french fries in a bag and handing it to you, right, in both of these cases. You go to both of these places and they give you, they take your order and they give it to you. However, the whole vibe and the energy is completely different in a Chick-fil-A as it is in anywhere else because they hold themselves to a higher standard. It's cleaner, the people are friendlier. The food probably tastes a little bit fresher and better. It's just better quality. You're doing the exact same thing, but like I said, putting fried chicken and french fries in a bag. However, it is the position that you do it from that changes like how you receive it as the, uh, as the customer, as the end user. So that's number one. The number one thing to remember is that it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And the frame that you operate from as a man is going to influence the way that anybody treats you, not just people that are on sugar baby sites. So uh, if you carry yourself in a confident way, if you know how to make people comfortable, if you know how to raise people's attraction, this is all topics which I talk about in my courses and in my coaching. And as time goes on, I'll let you guys in on how you can work with me as a coach. But understanding these things is gonna make anybody treat you differently and treat you better. I also want to point out here, this is very, very important and not enough people talk about this and remind themselves of this because unfortunately we live in a society right now that is really trying to feed us this demonic lie that men and women are the same and we're not. Men and women are, I mean, we're both human beings and members of the human family. However, men and women tend to, in general, be attracted to different things in each other. And oftentimes the things are opposite. For example, women tend to be attracted to uh, physical strength or the appearance of physical strength, right? Because they want to feel a lot of times, and you'll hear women say this, they want to feel safe and they want to feel protected. And that's really, that is actually a, a high compliment that a woman could give you if you're seeing somebody, you're dating someone and she tells you, I just feel so safe when I'm with you. That is a, a compliment coming from a woman because that means she trusts you to protect her. Do you as a man, have you ever wondered if a woman could protect you or not? Probably not. I would hope not. You're not even thinking about it. So women are often attracted to qualities that you as a man don't even think about, like physical strength, like I talked about, like dominance. Women are often attracted to the dominant guy in the room. How often do you hear of like the manager at some little job, some little job in the mall, the cell phone store, whatever, the manager, not even that good of looking of a guy, but if you go work there at, over time, 
you'll realize that he's been with maybe two or three of the chicks that work at the job. Not because he's particularly attractive or a chad or anything. He's just in a position of power because he's the manager of the cell phone store. And he ended up, the, the chicks that were there ended up being attracted to him. This happens all the time. In, in any job that you've had, I guarantee you a lot of you guys have had this experience where the manager at the job ended up being with some of the female employees. There was nothing particularly special about him. He was just the dominant guy in that environment. Do you as a man care if the woman is the boss of the cell phone store or whatever? Typically not. Men and women are attracted to different things. And I'm not going to drag this point on any longer, but what I'm saying is you can, uh, you can influence, you can raise a woman's attraction to you as a man through way more other things than just how you look, which for men is often the biggest part of the puzzle when you're thinking about attraction. The main thing that you're going to be worried about is as a man, typically, not all the time, but typically, Physical attraction is going to be the biggest slice of the pie. And then after that, probably comes, you know, is she cool to be around? Do you guys have fun together? Do you have some common interests? It doesn't even matter if you have common interests with a woman. If she likes you, she'll do what you want to do. So really, it's just like, are you physically attracted to her? Is she cool to be around? And maybe a couple, two, three other qualities that an individual man may care about. <clears throat> As a man, you have way more uh, categories that you can use to raise somebody's attraction level to you. So let's talk about this. It's well known that women are attracted to status. So let's say that you meet this person on a sugar baby site and you start, you pick her up in a nice car and start taking her to nice places. This is well known that, and you're confident in, you know, working on all the qualities that we're going to talk about in subsequent videos and courses and coaching. Just being in fancy places tends to kind of turn women on. If you've ever taken a woman to a nice place, if you guys had a good vibe and she wasn't just using you for a foodie date, you will notice that just being in nice places just seeing you operate as a man of status is going to raise her attraction level. If you ask her questions and talk to her and listen, being an active listener really turns women on. I've, I've written about this on my blog. There are some free resources that I'm going to leave links to as well down in the description box below. Women seem to be, women tend to be more attracted to guys that can listen to them and make them feel heard and understood. And actually all human beings probably respond to that. But if you show up, as this guy who understands the way that people feel attraction. If you're displaying some status, however you're doing that, you can take a person who might think, okay, yeah, he's all right, and raise that person's attraction level to you. You could also lower it by not doing these things, by talking too much, by uh, making a fool out of yourself, by saying something stupid. These are all things that I'm very familiar with because I have a tendency to put my foot in my mouth a lot when I talk to people. It's just a a challenge that I have. We all have challenges. So uh, hopefully I'm answering the question by letting you know that um, people are going to treat somebody who consider themselves to be a quote unquote loser a certain type of way. And then people are going to treat somebody who carries themselves with more confidence in another different way. It's not, it's not what you do. It's how you do it. My dad was so right. Another thing that I wanted to point out here is that we tend to fixate on the fact that the person is highly attractive, like we're very attracted to this person, and maybe she uh, is more physically attractive or younger or whatever is the quality more you know, than people that you typically can date, but you don't understand as well or you don't pay as much attention to the fact that you also are bringing something valuable to the relationship, which is not just finances, but the ability to have been financially successful. It's not easy to uh, be able to have enough money to pay your own bills, your own house, your own re uh, you know, utilities and everything like that, and also have enough money to be able to think about subsidizing somebody else's lifestyle, right? So for example, um, I pay for this entire house I'm sitting in, uh, I own this house and I have another investment property. Um, I did all that, I pay for all that, and I can actually, I have enough abundance to actually be able to consider helping somebody else out with her shit if I want to, if we decide to establish that type of relationship. That puts you in a top tier category as a man. So I guess what I'm saying is, in short, is it's not just that you're dating out of your league because she's very attractive. She's also dating out of her league in the sense that probably the typical people that this individual, let's talk about the average probably sugar baby. I know there's some very successful doctors and lawyers and computer programmers on sugar baby sites, but probably the majority of these people are uh, college students or young professionals, like just starting out in their career or going to school for something, whatever. The average guy, typical guy that she's around doesn't, isn't successfully 
employed in a career or doesn't own a business or whatever it is that you, as a man who's thinking about sugar dating, does. Whatever you're doing, if you're in tech, if you own a business, if you are in e-commerce, whatever you're doing that affords you enough financial resources to be able to support yourself and even consider helping somebody else out financially, it's, pr it's a pretty big deal. So I guess, <laughs> if, unless I'm, <clears throat> if I'm not explaining this properly, the point that I'm making is that both people are sort of dating up, right? To use the slogan of one of the popular dating sites. My favorite sugar dating site is called sugardaddymeat.com. Lots of cool features. Uh, I like everything about it. The one other thing to do that I never bring up is that sugar daddy meat is restricted to only the top 20 richest countries in the world. So that means you don't get, or you get hardly any spam messages from Venezuela and all these, you know, poorer countries. I'm sure they're nice people, but you don't get as much spam from the developing countries as you do on some of the other sites. So if you're tired of spam messages, if you want to try some cool features, sugardaddymeat.com might be the way to go. And there's a link for a free profile in the description box below. So check that out. Right. So we don't consider the fact that she's also dating up. It's not just me dating up because she's pretty. She's also dating up because probably the typical guys that she dates aren't financially successful. And look, my financial situation isn't that great. It's better than a lot of people. It, it could get better. Some people would look at my, um, some people would look at my situation and be like, oh my God, I can't believe you could survive on that much money. Some people would look at my situation and be somewhat impressed. It just depends on where you're at and finding somebody who matches with your needs and that you're able to meet her needs. So don't just think about it as, oh, you know, I'm this guy that has to sugar date. I don't have to do anything. I get to. I get to. I get to go around all the bullshit and all the frustrations of swiping on apps endlessly conversations that go nowhere, swiping on profiles of people that I'm not very attracted to just because I'm uh, lonely or frustrated or horny or bored or whatever. I get to get to leverage my hard work and my success to date some very attractive people and improve their lives along the way as well. So really it's a win-win. In conclusion, uh, anybody's going to treat you the way that you treat yourself. Um, if you see yourself as a guy who is successful, who has earned the privilege to be able to date beautiful people if you want to. May I remind you guys that beautiful women and guys with money have gone together for all of history, right? That's You see guys like Hugh Hefner, Donald Trump, celebrities with some of the most attractive people on the planet, Leonardo DiCaprio, with some of the most attractive people on the planet because of their hard work and their success. So this is just very natural. I find actually, and I could make a whole different video on this, I consider sugar dating to be the most based and the most traditional way that you can date in the modern era because it's firmly established gender roles, which is something that I find really sexy and really attractive. Uh, in my opinion, the essence of masculinity is giving, is providing, is protection, is giving from a position of abundance, of having a lot of resources and so much being so full and so abundant in yourself that you can give to somebody that you care about out of that, right? So I hope that I explained that very well. If you have any more questions about this, leave them in the comment box below. Check out my free guide. That's actually gonna answer a lot of you guys' questions. Some of these things that you're thinking about or hesitancies that you have will be answered by just taking a look at my quick PDF guide. I think it's like uh, four or five pages. It's a quick read, lots of good information in there. I'm happy to be able to offer it to you for free for a limited time. After I give out a few more of them, I'm going to put it uh, behind a paywall as part of a course. So make sure that you grab it for free while you can. Check out the link to sugardaddymeat.com, which is my uh, recommended sugar site that you check out and like the video, comment what you wanna see next. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.